Okay, guys. Well, we've been going after this morning. Haven't really done much on the power shift because I've been working on this and bouncing kind of back and forth. Uh, uh, on this this old rancher's pickup here, this is kind of their beater they feed with and run around on the ranch with, as you can tell. And she's in pretty rough shape. You can't really kill one of these old seven three power strokes. Okay, so. I gotta get a PCM for it. Um, got into Identifix there because I couldn't. It was running like crap, you know. It's not like it was running on four cylinders, and I was kind of in suspicion of an IDM. These older 2000s were up under the inner fender here, the injector driver module. Um, I just don't. I I couldn't communicate with it at all, and so I went in here and I checked the. 16 pin connector on the data link connector and you should have a power and ground and there's some more grounds on here But basically pin 2 and pin 10. I think what do they call that the SPC bus? SPC positive and the SPC negatives kind of like their multiplexing network Well, I have nothing on SPC uh, pin 2 no voltage at all and then um, So I checked it basically you can pull it back pull your pcm plug out unplug it and check from from the data link connector to pin 16 from pin 2 here to pin 16 on the pcm connector and i had you know point point one i mean it was no had good continuity there was nothing wrong with it and then same thing on the negative one and so pretty sure the pcm has taken a shit on it um so I gotta go see if I can get online and find one of those, but um, I've got only three codes left on the, I've been chasing codes on that thing. Um, I got a fuel level, what, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to get Calterm and unconfigure this stuff because I can't, I can't unconfigure the three things. That, the only, those three codes is, uh, I got left, one's a multiplexing code because it's looking for the cab controller and it doesn't have one and there's no way to get rid of that you can't unconfigure that unless you have cal term the second uh one is fuel level which i can't believe they've got that program to where the ecm's looking for fuel level um the third one is what the hell was it uh, ambient air temperature sensor. So I, I got to unconfigure the two with Calterm. The other one I'm gonna have to use the ambient air temperature sensor. We got to have that. I got to get a hold of Kenworth or Peterbilt or somebody and order an ambient air temperature sensor for like a 2013 388 Peterbilt. What it came off of, and I'll have to wire it up on the mirror or something because that ambient air temperature sensor is used for a lot of different things. And then all the codes are gone. What happened is. I'll just kind of give you a brief overview. I had a bunch of SCR codes back here. Uh, uh, if you see abnormal update rate codes, that means you got a problem with your CAN network more than likely, or a power and ground issue going to the modules. Every one of these SCR temperature sensor module, the, the NH3 module, all those modules are their own independent modules, and they communicate across the two-wire 1939 CAN data link network. Uh, so, anyway, uh, I wasn't getting any power and ground, so I finally figured out that on the 14-pin connector on the ECM, there's what they call a J141 crossover that comes off the ECM right here, and you'll have the CAN high and the CAN low on it. I don't know if you can see that, but... It actually ties in on, goes up here on the J1 plug on the ECM, but you can see there's the yellow and green. There's your can high, can low. There is a yellow wire here and a white wire. Well, the yellow wire is 12 volt switch power and it's an ignition power, what I found out. Because I had a hell of a time, I couldn't find anywhere where it was telling me where this yellow wire was supposed to be plumbed to. See, what this wire does, it goes, it goes into the loom here into the J1 plug, it powers up something there too, but I'm not sure what back in here, because it doesn't tell you shit in the wiring schematic. But it goes back in the OEM harness, 
and goes back up into that P103 plug and there's a yellow wire in there and I finally just what I finally did is I just took an ohm meter and went in there with put my ohm meter on audible and just started going back and forth till I heard it go beep and I knew which wire I needed to hook up to ignition so I got all those powered up and I kept getting a 4152 code and it just kept coming back and 4152 is SCR uh, temperature sensor module normal abnormal update rate which means you know either a canvas problem or power and ground well i had power and ground and then i checked the can voltage on it and the can voltage was like 3.5 can high and like 2.8 or 2.7 can low and i thought well shit that's okay 3.5 is a little bit high but um anyway I checked that, and then I started doing all the can checks with an ohm meter. You're supposed to unplug this 14-pin connector and check, uh, you know, check the resistance on everything. Long story short, um, I went around there, and I was unplugging that and plugging it back in. I thought, God, you know what? I don't feel any resistance when I plug that in. It just doesn't feel like there's anything there. So I unplugged it, and I looked at it, and took my little O-ring pick, and I collapsed the spades on those terminals and plugged it back in and I went around to the Cummins Insight with the codes on it and they went inactive. I said, you got to be shitting me. It was not making good connection where it plugs in on the temperature sensor module. So that being said, I'm happy so far because I've got all the after treatment codes out of it. Uh, the only codes that I've got basically that I've got left is that ambient air temperature sensor, which I've got to get that in there. And then I've got those two that I've got to unconfigure with Calterm. And then, you know, we still haven't run this thing long enough, though, to... Once you get her running and you drive her down the road, there might be all kinds of stuff that comes up. So we got to get that. We got to cross that bridge. But so far, we've overcome many, many obstacles. I had to buy three new batteries for it this morning. The other batteries were shot. Uh, I got another thing I want to tell you about on this Peterbilt. I got, uh, there's, a, I think I mentioned it on one of my other videos about the multiplexing on the uh, gauge networks. I found Murphy makes two inch gauges that are CAN, they basically convert CAN to analog. So uh, what I got going on is I ordered four of those and what you do is you wire those and instead of, instead of taking the information from like a cab control module, you can wire those basically you can piggyback all the ones up there so those four gauges you can piggyback the wires all together and then run the twisted pair down to the can network and the ecm will communicate with and will send all the information to those gauges so that's what they tell me anyway we'll see i haven't it doesn't work yet okay well guys we got Here's the deal on this. Uh, I had videoed the other two shafts. The main output here. I, may, I I videoed all that. But I got my greasy paws all over the lens. And I didn't realize how bad the picture was. And I was editing the video the other night. And that's why it was only 27 minutes long. Because the rest of the footage was absolute shit. And I just... I kind of cut it right there and says, Well, you know, I kind of wanted to show you the the big shaft here rebuilding it but it was pretty poor quality so we're going to basically we're done with all three shafts we're going to hook them up to the lifting tool here and we're going to set them back in the case well me and daisy girl decided to take a little break there and eat some what the hell are these things chili cheese fritos she got half the bag i got half the bag and we got the lifting fixture on the three shafts. Let's see if we can get them in the case. I'm just going to put this here for now. I'm going to go start the truck. That is a pretty good little view right there, I think.
you got to make sure you get this o-ring it's temporary on this let's keep that bearing from falling off the counter shaft i am backwards you gotta go the other way there genius You got a little motion in the ocean here. damn way Okay, I got my, I need to get my reverse idler.
is that shaft not going down? take that off. Make sure I can get that auxiliary drive gear in there and the bearing and all that. Every time I do one of these transmissions, I always think of that old Jerry Reed song. She got the gold mine, I got the shaft. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Okay, so everything should turn. Yes. And everything is splined up. We should be golden pony boy. Yeah, huh? Daniel out and see what the torque's supposed to be on that one. 
everything will line up real good when we put the case halves on there. But it's actually lined up fairly decent. Auxiliary drive gear and shaft. Okay, let me find that. Alright, let's torque our reverse idle order and our auxiliary drive gear. Alright. Torquey, torquey. Fifty two on this one. Oh, yeah, that's it all. That made everything just kind of fall right into place. And sixty, let me, I think sixty six on this one. Yeah, sixty six. 50, 60, yeah, somewhere right around in there. Okay, let's go back and retorque this one here, 50. Two, which we're going to be going to 55 because that's all this torque wrench goes to. Well, all right, folks. Uh, the old shaft. I got the shaft. Okay. Let's see here. That kid's four wheeler's got a sure it makes a lot of noise, but it ain't got much go to it. Shit, that must have been right the first time, huh? I was right the first time. Damn it. Damn it, Jim. Okay. Alright, now we're making headway on her. Something I like to do once I get them in there kind of helps me feel a little bit better. <laughs> kind of air check them. Should hear a thump. Oh, that's a lube port. I forgot. Okay, there it is. There's only three packs on the shaft. The fourth hole is a lead port, I believe. That's good. There it goes, that one's holding really good. Okay, they're good. They're good. Kind of hard to get that rubber tip nozzle to seat up sometimes.
probably should have used my guide studs and I didn't even think about it. I went on there not too bad. Going to put the accumulator springs and accumulator piston in. Get in there. Okay. I don't remember what I got to put in next. Uh, I want to do the park brake piston. I got a new park brake piston. And, and, uh, And on these park brake pistons, for seals, or not seals, frictions, I don't worry about soaking them because all it has to do is stop the tractor when it's sitting steel. Once you get oil in it, it'll be good enough. I always worry about the, the members that are rotating, and I don't want them slipping on me or burning them up. But on a park brake disc, I don't about it too much. Okay. Are you going to fight me? You get a prick. Comes the phone again. Okay, I need park brake piston. Usually they don't go in too hard. But... Uh, I see it trying to catch on me right there. Why are you fighting me so? You usually don't go in that hard, but this one's being a real son of a bitch. These are a lot tougher than an automotive. You can be a little bit rougher with them and get away with it. Automotive shit you can't do that stuff with. Oh, I see she's hanging up right there. I 
got it in there without ripping the seal into. I've never ripped one to be honest with you, and I've I've had a couple that went in pretty hard and had to get a feeler gauge and go around them or what have you. I could probably just reuse these, but I got new ones. Okay, do I got four there? Daisy girl, it's getting close to being about eight o'clock. I think by the time we get our tools picked up and blow this popsicle sand, it'll be eight o'clock. All right, guys, I'll come back tomorrow. Man, I want to get this done, but I just keep getting interrupted by a little. Well, there's too many things going on at one time. <laughs>